Let's think about it in terms of this. If I wanna know if this soup is good, so I, uh, let's say I made a pot of soup, I wanna know if it's good, well, what can I do? I have some options here. I could take a spoonful of the soup, right? So here's my spoon, or, and I could take a bite and say, hey, that soup's pretty good. Or I could eat a bowl of the soup and decide, hey, is that a pretty, is that good soup? Maybe it's good soup. Uh, or I could eat the whole pot of soup. And then by the end of the pot, I'd be like, I'm gonna know if that's good soup or not, because I just ate a whole pot of it. So it's unreasonable to eat the whole pot. So what we do is we say, this is our population. This is what we're interested in. So we call it our population. So this is everything uh, out there. It's all the soup that I made. So I wanna know, hey, is this population good or bad? So if I just take a spoonful, yes, this is a sample. It's a very, very small sample because it's one tablespoon of soup. So this, I would say, is a very small sample versus a bowl, this is also a sample. It's just bigger. So I've got a very small sample, a very, uh, a little bit bigger versus the whole entire thing. So I could use either one of these to determine. Usually, because we're in a hurry, we just take a sample like this. I take a bite of it and say, hey, that soup's pretty good or it needs more salt or something like that. But really, it'd be better to do a bowl. Why would it be better to do a bowl? Well, what if you had a bad bite? What if there was this gross onion or something sitting in there or like a, a fly landed in it or a pea that looks like a pea? Uh, and you don't like it. You don't like that. And you got a bad batch of one spoonful of this would say, oh, that is gross soup. But really, you just got the one hunk of bad soup, maybe a, a garlic clove or something terrible in there. So the idea is that if we can take a decent sized sample, where it's not too small, it's not too big, because too big, I can't eat too much of it. It's unreasonable. It's unreasonable for me to eat this whole pot of soup or even a huge bowl. But if I take just the right amount of size here and it's mixed in really well of all the soup, it's got all the ingredients, not just one area, It's a uh, this would be a nice sample. So we try to get the right size and the good mix. So it has to be like a good mix of all the soup. It can't just be the top layer. What if you just get all that junk on top? That's not really the soup. I need a good mix, and it has to be uh, a, a good size. It can't just be one person. You can't say, uh, or one M&M. &M. Um, so it has to be a good size. The general rule of thumb, there are no rules. This is really kind of weird here. But if we're talking about decent-sized populations, we're trying to get sample sizes around 30 people or 30 something, 30 M&Ms or 30. is just a, a good starting point when you're talking about things. Uh, not too big, not too small. And I say 30, usually it's at least 30. So we should say our, our N, our number of people, is usually going to be bigger than 30 if we can. Awesome. So let's take a look at, so why would we do things like this? Why is sampling so important? Well, a lot of times we want to know things about like America. So here's America. One way to find out things about America is to ask everybody in America. Well, that's kind of tricky. There are a lot of people in America. So to to say like, I wanna know how many people like Taco Bell or how many people like hamburgers or whatever I wanna know. It'd be a ton of work to ask everybody in America. It's just not practical, it's impossible. If I could do it though, when you ask everybody, this is called a census. So this would be if you have every person in the population. So in this case, the population would be Americans. And if I ask every single person uh, in the population, that's called a census. This is so tricky that we don't do a census in America. We do it every 10 years because it's just a pain to find every person and ask them. And to try to get 100% turnout is next to impossible. When you're talking about populations that are so big, it's just too many people. So we only try it every 10 years and we go for 100%, but I'm not sure what we get. I can't imagine we get 100%. It's just too hard to find every single person and ask them questions um, and get the results back in. So what do we do instead? We do samples. So this is like taking a poll. We kind of take samples. Uh, so up here, a census would be the entire population, or I could take a poll. I'm gonna ask, uh, every, I'm gonna ask a couple people from California, maybe from Ohio, New York, I'm, or whatever, all across the U.S. I'm gonna take little, like circle little bits of them. I'm gonna take these people out, just to kind of get a cross section of what's happening. Do you like tacos? Do you like? Uh, uh, hamburgers or whatever my question is from all over so I just do a sample when those little circles of people it's something like when I pull them this is a hilarious poll by the way are you using the poll <laughs> uh, so that's why samples are so important they're more practical I could do this all the time and we do do it all the time we say things like who are you gonna vote for Democrat or Republican uh, any kind of polls where we go out and we ask a sample the key is are we getting good samples so it can get tricky 
And that's why we get into, oops, let's, let's talk about still more. Let's define this. So what is a population? This is where you may wanna pause, jot this down, because um, I know sometimes I talk fast. The population is the entire set of objects or individuals being studied. So whatever it is, it can be all Americans. It could be all the kids in your class. It could be all the M&Ms in a party bucket. Whatever you're talking about, the pot of soup. Um, that's, the, that's the population. Now what do we look at? is the sample. So it's unreasonable as all Americans, so we take a, a random sample. You can see there's boys and girls in here. I take a random sample of boys and girls. Uh, so group, it is a group from the population being studied. Now the key here is, it does a sample, a good sample represents the population. It has to represent what is going on. So it has to be a way where I'm not saying, I'm gonna pick all the people who agree with me, or I'm gonna pick all the people who don't agree with me, or whatever the thing says. It has to be a totally random sample of what's happening here for it to really represent. But this is our goal here. We are trying to find samples that represent the entire population. This is our goal here. It's called inferencing. It gets crazy. I hope someday you take AP stats or regular stats just to get a more in-depth look because this is the stuff you'll see uh, every day in the news or in real life. Uh, but we're going to get a, just a brief overview of this, kind of what is happening when we do sampling. So there's lots of sampling techniques. We're only going to take a look at three of them today. I think next time we'll look, take a look at a couple more. Uh, there's a variety of ways to get a good sample. The first one is called a simple random sample. So here's a little picture here. So what happens, I have a population and I randomly, kind of like I was doing earlier, I randomly selected people from this population. The simple random sample is awesome. This is the best way to do it if you can. How do you do this? Well, usually we make some kind of list. So we list, hey, we have um, 100 people in our class. And then we ran, so let's say, let's say, uh, I don't wanna put real numbers on here. So if you make a list of everybody in your class, and then you randomly draw from that list. So you randomly say, I'm gonna draw person eight, 42, 51, 63. Uh, that would be a random sample. This is a great way to do it. Is it always possible? No, sometimes we don't have a list of the entire population or there's just things getting our way. It's too, uh, it's too expensive or people are too spread out or far away or things like that. So there's, there's reasons why we sometimes can't do a simple random sample. The next one's called a convenience sample. This sample looks something like this. It's kind of like, hey, these people are right around me, so I'm gonna ask them a question. This is by far the easiest way to do it. That's the perk of this. It's very easy. I can look around my classroom and say, hey, you four kids are sitting next to me. What do you think about tacos? That's so easy to do it. Is this good? Usually not. This is usually not too good uh, because you're just getting a sample that's very easy for you. It could work out that you get a sample that represents the whole population. Usually not. It just happens to be people around you. A lot of times people around you think the same way. If you just ask your friends, they may think, think very similar to you. So it usually doesn't pan out too well. So we have to be careful with a convenient sample. Okay, the next way to do it is called a systematic sample. And if you take a look at the picture here is, I take all the people in the population and I start to ask, hey, I'm gonna ask every third person. So this is a nice mix here. So this is um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, same thing, you get a list or an order and I'm going to ask every, it doesn't have to be, in this case is every third, it could be every fourth, fifth, second, whatever, uh, every third person and in the list to see what I come up with. And this is, gives me a nice way of a nice flow. So. Uh, it has some pros and cons to this. This is good if there's no patterns or groupings, like if you have groups of people who are similar mind together, you may not get a, a fair representation, but this is a nice kind of mix where uh, maybe I can't get the list of everybody, I take a random sample, but I'm gonna take every third, uh, let's say M&M off the factory line or something. So this can be a good mix. It's not as great. The this, this simple random sample is the best because this key here is random. We want things to be random and they're random if everybody has an equal chance of being selected. So uh, everybody here could have been picked, that's why this one is so good, versus here, no, you're only gonna pick people around you. So here are the three types I want you to be familiar with today, three options you have. A lot of times the easiest one is in real life is the one that happens, but it actually can usually yield the worst results here for sampling. 
So let's take a look at this in action. What would this look like? So let's say that Mr. Brust uh, wants to know if, there should, if the seventh grade class would like to have a spring dance. So would they like to have a dance? So what is the population here in this class? Or I'm sorry, <laughs> dang it, said the answer. What is the, the population in this? It would be the seventh grade class. It's the entire seventh grade class. That is my population. So Mr. Brust wants to get a, a sample to kind of represent the seventh grade class. That's his goal to represent it. So one option I would have is to ask every single seventh grader. I could walk around, find every sim single seventh grader and ask him, do you wanna have a spring dance? If I did this, this would be a census. This would be asking every person. And then I would know pretty conclusively how seventh graders feel because I ask every single kid. Now at a small school, I could probably do this. This actually wouldn't be too hard at our school, but at bigger schools, it's too much work to go and ask every single kid. So what could I do? What if I just said, I'm gonna only ask the kids in my seminar. So if I just say, hey, I have a seventh grade seminar, I'll ask those kids. Is that a good sample? Maybe, but it's a convenient sample. This is easy for Mr. Bruss because he has, you know, 14 kids chilling in the seminar. I'm just gonna ask those kids, hey, do you want a spring dance? Do they represent the entire seventh grade? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're a random sample of kids Maybe they're in there for a reason though. Maybe they're in there because they want extra math help or maybe they're in there because they play a sport or maybe they're in there because uh, they their schedule has them going to band. So there's a lot of different things that this may not work. It's convenient for Mr. Brust, uh, but it may not actually be a good sample. How about this option here? I could get a list of the seventh grade class from the guidance counselor or registrar and I randomly pick 20 kids. Is that good? Yes, this would be a simple random sample. So I get a list. All the kids, I randomly pick 20 of them or 30 of them and ask them, hey, do you guys want to spring dance? This would be a great way to do it. If you could do this, this is what I would do if I want the best sample. It gives everybody an equal chance to get it. Or a systematic sample. So this would be a nice, this is the systematic sample where uh, I determine before I get my list, like maybe I randomly generate it, roll a dice or something, say, hey, I'm going to get every eighth kid on that list. That would be a systematic sample.